How you doing? Welcome to Ben's Lab. It's good to see you. Now, uh, summer's here in Australia, which means uh, one of two things. One, that it's uh, really boiling hot, like all the time. And two, that the flies are back. <laughs> you can see from my uh, great Aussie salute there that uh, it's an ongoing problem here, which we're all just used to down under. Now, flies are, well, pretty gross and, well, kind of annoying to be completely honest. But they're also uh, pretty interesting in their own way and quite useful um, in ways that I'm going to try and show you in this episode. So um, stay tuned here on Ben's Backyard uh, Lab. The first flying insects appeared around 400 million years ago during the Carboniferous period. But the first flies appeared much later, about 230 million years ago during the mid-Triassic, when dinosaurs were on their way to dominating the planet. Flies belong to the order Diptera. Diptera comes from the ancient Greek, di meaning two, and terra meaning wing. Flies are immensely important for life on Earth. About 100,000 species exist. They can colonise all continents except Antarctica. Antarctica always seems to mess out. Flies occupy an important place in food webs. Most flies are detritivores, meaning they feed on ecological waste, i.e. dead and dying organic matter. In this case, these flies are trying to rid my yard of several poos my dogs have blessed me with. Okay, so this does seem pretty disgusting to us. But just imagine a world in which nothing was around to get rid of nature's garbage. It would be unlivable. So we have scavengers like flies and other insects to thank for that. Now as I mentioned before, diptera means two wings. But take a closer look. What are those little flaps twitching away under the fly's wings? These are actually a modified second set of wings, which have evolved over time to become a pair of structures called halteres. These aid the fly in navigation and balance whilst in flight. What's that strange structure extending from the fly's head? This leads to our next question. Here comes fun. This fly must think it's Christmas. Just take a look at it, tasting this mountain of dog poo with its feet. Yes, feet. The structure seen here patting the poo is a proboscis. This is a tube-like appendage the fly possesses. Now, flies don't have jaws, teeth, or a mouth as we would understand. So how do they eat? Watch this fly again. The fly vomits on its food, coating it in saliva and digestive juices, which basically soften and break the food up. The fly then uses the proboscis like a straw, sucking up this magnificent feast directly into its main stomach. Here is another equally important function of flies before. Yes, flies are the second largest group of pollinating animals after bees. Now, bee populations are in decline worldwide, as agricultural poisons and human pollution drives many toward endangered species status. Flies were around long before flowering plants, or angiosperms, appeared. But along with beetles, flies became pollinators when they finally did appear, some 125 million years ago, during the early Cretaceous period. Bees first appeared around 100 million years ago. How are flies pollinators, you ask? How are flies pollinators? Well, it's not much different than bees, really. It turns out that many fly species, like these hoverflies, eat pollen when they can find it. Take a closer look at this hoverfly eating pollen. See how the pollen grains are sticking to its exoskeleton? It's that simple. Like a bee, the hungry fly just hops from flower to flower, carrying pollen grains with it, pollinating flowers in the process. Now, I'm not saying that the potential extinction of bees isn't a massive concern, but I am saying that nature often has a plan B. Yeah, it's uh, been fun. Uh, subscribe to Ben's Lab and uh, share and tell your friends. All right, see ya. So, Albert, what do you think of Ben's Lab? Is it a good channel? 